Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Ree's Remedies, or Re or Sharifa. I hope you all are having a great day and I hope this video finds you doing well. I wanna give you tips today on how you can stay healthy and have a healthy mindset and a healthy body while we are in quarantine just trying to make the best of it and trying to stay well overall and this is my favorite mug more gratitude less attitude and that's the message we will promote on this channel so my number one tip for having the mindset of a healthy eater is to have an open mind have an open mind be open to trying different things being open to try different foods being open to try different habits, being open to try different routines, being open to just taking the time to take care of yourself so that you can find out what you need and what works for you. Because sometimes it's not an overnight success. You don't just find out, you just don't find a workout routine that works for you. You just don't find like a, a food regimen or foods that work for you overnight. Sometimes you have to try things and they don't work. But keeping an open mind, you won't, di you won't get discouraged and you'll remember what you're trying to do. Have a healthy mindset when it comes to eating. Keep moving. That's my next tip for staying healthy. I think I've been saying the wrong thing. We're trying to stay healthy in quarantine. These clips in here like they supposed to be because, honey, I think I didn't mix two things together. I'm damn near mixing videos. I know a lot of us are working from home and it literally takes maybe three feet to get to work. You know, we wake up and we only got to go three feet for work. We go from the bedroom maybe to the office or from the bedroom to the living room. Or sometimes we don't leave the bedroom and that's where work is. And that's the life that we've been living since early 2020 and we're still living that life. So it's important to make sure that you fit movement into your everyday. Even if you're working from home, make sure, make sure you're standing up every hour at your desk. Make sure throughout your day, you're at least taking 10 minutes or 15 minutes to go outside. Make it a priority to step outside your door and walk. Take a nature walk. Walk through the neighborhood, walk the block, walk around your apartments. If you don't have an animal, I don't have an animal, but I still go outside. Like, it's like I'm practicing or something. It's like I'm in um, puppy training, puppy mom training. Like, I'm, I'm going outside every day. I'm not going three times a day. Like, probably if I had a dog or whatever. But I'm going outside every day. I'm making sure I'm getting my vitamin D. I'm making sure I'm walking. Um, sometimes after work, if I'm like, I just need to get some energy out. I put on some music. I put my headphones in. And I come and I get in my full body length mirror. And I just dance it out. I dance it out. I move my spine because I know I've been sitting for hours. I work at a desk. I work at a desk like so many of us do. And I'm sitting. And my spine needs to move. My hips need to move. I need to feel good. My muscles need to stretch. So I make sure that I fit that in. I fit it in my schedule. I fit yoga in my schedule. I fit nature walks in my schedule. I fit running up and down the stairs randomly. In my schedule, I make sure that I'm conscious and every day I'm thinking about moving my body. You don't have to necessarily go to the gym. You don't necessarily have to have a gym routine. Just constantly think about moving your body. And you can also, maybe if you have an Apple Watch, maybe try to track your steps. Maybe try to track your steps because you can stand up at your desk sometimes and just shake it out. Move it out. Excuse the tea on my sweater, y'all. Sorry. But just shake it out, you know, get your body moving ever. You don't want your muscles to like start to atrophy. We only get one body. We have to treat it right. Like if you're always feeling stiff, you need to stretch. You need to put it in your schedule to stretch five minutes in the morning, stretch five minutes in the evening, 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. Like you need to put in the schedule for yourself to keep living. You have to realize if you don't move your body, you are dying. Think about how grateful you are to be able to move your body. I'm so grateful that I can sit here and I can move my body. Some people can't. Some people can't. 
realize your privilege and move whatever you can stretch do yoga wrap your hands around yourself love yourself give yourself a hug you know take care of yourself like this is a video to remind you to take care of yourself when you go to your kitchen like i said we're trapped at home our kitchen is right there we no longer have to go downstairs to the break room we no longer have to order lunch i mean we can but we're trying to move away from ordering lunch guys because it's all about preparing for your body or you know purchasing prepared food that's good for your body because i know people have like meal prep services and that's okay i'm i'm good with that um but when you go to make a food choice this is what i want you to tell yourself now i'm a believer that 80 to 90 percent of your diet should be food that feeds your body it heals your body and only 10 to 20 percent should be food that you know may not be so good for your body so either the food is feeding a disease or it's fighting a disease that's what i want you to say when i go to make a meal i'm thinking like okay how many different vegetables can i get how many different vegetables can i get in this meal how much um protein can i get in this meal how much carbs can i get in this meal um how many good carbs can i get i don't want to use too much sugar because i know sugar feeds disease i want to get all the alkaline foods in this in this meal how many alkaline foods can i get in this meal because i know uh, alkaline foods are good for my body i'm thinking about when i go to eat i'm thinking about eliminating inflammation when i go to eat i'm thinking about eliminating mucus from the body because mucus and inflammation is what feeds disease that's disease that don't, those are ailments those are ailments okay and food can be your medicine i am a big believer in that food can be your medicine if we just allow it to be if we allow food to heal us it will our bodies can heal ourselves we just have to help it along a little bit by feeding it good things so when you go to eat and make food choices, think about that. Is it feeding a disease or is it fighting a disease? And just a little bit more, try to pick foods that fight diseases. Just a little bit more. You know, leave a little, a little bit more of the sugar out. Uh, leave a little bit more of the processed foods out. You know, just be a little bit kinder to yourself. Be a little nicer to yourself. And the more and more kinder you are, the more and more nice you are with these food choices, your body will start to respond and you'll really start to feel good and you'll realize like, wow, my mind feels clear. Wow, I feel more focused. Wow, I feel more driven. You're eliminating the things that are feeding disease. So now you're having, you know, you're, you're filling your bodies with more healing foods. So now you're healing from the inside. And so because you're healing from the inside, your actions reflect that. And so just know it's all related. It's all related. It's all connected. It's all connected. It's to listen. Oh, this is a good one. Let me take a breath and get some tea because this one is for real. My next tip, y'all, is to listen and know your body. So if you feel like you're a person that doesn't know your body, my challenge to you is to get to know your body. Listen to your body. When you eat certain foods, you know when your stomach don't sit right, but you still eat that food. Because you say stuff like, oh, girl, I want some ice cream, but my stomach going to be hurting. Don't eat that food. Oh, girl, I want some hot wings, but my stomach going to be hurting. Your body is trying to tell you they don't like that shit. Your body is trying to tell you dismiss it. Your body is trying to tell you no, but you're not listening. So my challenge to you all is to listen to your body because listening to your body will help you live a more healthy, fulfilled life. Your body is giving you signs and hints where you're getting that acid reflux when you eat that certain food. Your body's trying to let you know this is one you can let go. You ain't got to eat this food and your body will be perfectly fine. It will be even happier. It's trying to let you know like, baby, you can skip this one, but we not listening. So I challenge you to listen to your body. Listen to your body. Your body will tell you what it needs. It'll tell you when it's hungry. It'll tell you when it's thirsty. Like a lot of times we feel like we're hungry, 
But if you go and you drink a full glass of water, you might feel like, oh, I'm good. I was just thirsty. Sometimes the signals get mixed up. But you have to listen to your body and you have to try out different things. And you have to really take time to want to get the know the signals. So take the time out, want to get the know the signals and see how that improves your relationship with food. See how that improves your relationship and how you feel at all. Because once you start to listen to your body, you really start to get rid of those foods that your body is talking to you about. You're going to start feeling better. I guarantee you. Like, I can't put a timeline on it, but I guarantee you, you're going to start feeling better. My final tip for you all is to hold yourself accountable. Hold yourself accountable. Hold yourself accountable in being a conscious consumer. A conscious consumer. Hold yourself accountable with being a conscious eater. Like, be conscious. Like, now that you know better, you know better. You know that you shouldn't be eating that food to make your stomach hurt. You know better. Now it's time for you to challenge yourself to do better. Because when you know better, you do better. Not all the time. There has to be a challenge and a decision in there. So go ahead and make the decision to hold yourself accountable for the life that you say you really want. You say you want to be healthy? You want to be healthy in quarantine. You want to lose weight in quarantine. You want to be you want to feel good. You don't want to feel stiff. You don't want to feel sick. You don't want to feel tired. You don't want to feel sluggish. Hey, do it. Do it. The only thing that's stopping you is you. If you believe that you can, you can if you say you will. You can't just say, oh, I want to, and then not do the things that get you that action or get you that result. Oh, I want to be healthy. Okay, so... You make the decision to be healthy. Now, the steps are what we just discussed. You can start there. You know, that's a good little starting block. And then we will get, boom, healthy. So it's like, boom, you came to the video. That was a good start. That's a good step. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you because you're making the conscious decision to ingest healthy conscious content. Healthy conscious content, content created to uh, add to the collective, content created to give tips that can truly help people, truly things that I've learned in my life that I'm trying to give back to others. Because I feel like if I'm, if I'm a light, I'm trying to shine it on everybody. I want everybody to get some of that light. I want everybody to get some of that good feeling. I want everybody to feel like I feel when I eat plant-based. I want everybody to get the knowledge that I got because the knowledge that I got changed my life. And I'm just simply out here trying to share it with y'all. So I'm proud of you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and these tips are helpful for living a more healthy life active life in quarantine and i'll see you guys in my next video peace love and tofu grease we out